we saw how brain works what are the various parts of the brain which are involved with the, some voluntary actions or involuntary actions and brain is actually coordinating and controlling all the systems of your body but earlier we said that the coordination in human beings was possible because of two ways first was nervous control which we understood by the form, by the whole process how how the electrical impulses travels from the neurons what is the role of brain what is the role of uh, spinal cord how the nerves are coming out and that all came under nervous control now we are going to come under the next part which is chemical control the chemicals are also important for coordinating with the nervous system how now we all know that we are growing we were so small when we were born born now you are six, 15 to 16 year old that means you have grown up now this growing age also is responsible because some chemicals are released into your body through the glands and the chemicals which are coming out through the glands in your body are known as hormones so this hormone play a very important role in the growth of your body what are hormones hormones are nothing but the chemicals which are released by the some glands and these glands are called as endocrine glands so the chemical control when i say chemical control along with the nervous control the chemical control is also playing a very important role here the hormones are the chemicals which are released into your bloodstream through a glands through glands which are known as endocrine glands now these endocrine glands do not have any pipe like or duct like structure which will release the chemicals actually it doesn't have any duct it doesn't have any pipe like structure it directly opens into the bloodstream so they are also called as ductless glands endocrine glands there are number of glands present in our body like adrenal glands thymus glands pituitary glands testes ovaries pineal body the all these names which i am taking they are all the names of endocrine glands these endocrine glands if they don't work our body will not grow properly so for our normal growth this hormones are very important and these hormones play a very important role along with the nervous system so these endocrine glands since they do not have any duct or any pipe coming out through their gland and then which will go and enter in the bloodstream they are called as ductless glands they directly open into the blood that means the chemicals are directly released into the blood now why into the blood directly because blood is flowing throughout your body and when it flows throughout the body these hormones can be carried to any part wherever the chemicals are required when i say whenever the chemicals are required that means it it has to use the organ which is the target organ the many times the adrenal gland suppose i take an example of adrenal gland they release a chemical which is known as adrenaline what is the function of adrenaline this is also involved with the growth function adrenaline another function is that i'm just giving an example that adrenaline reduces our stress level now when we are very angry what happens after sometimes if you just keep that person away he cools down now automatically he is not doing that cooling part he is very angry the adrenaline is released from the adrenal glands and that helps it to cool down this is one example i gave so this all these hormones are working with the nervous system to have a proper coordination and control over your activities of the body so what are the differences here the nerve impulses are very fast within fraction of second the nerve will take the messages and the nerve impulses will do the action and also it is of short duration that means if i want to do some action it is of short duration but what about this chemical control the chemical control are of long duration it will go on secreting chemicals throughout your life or when required and it doesn't have such immediate action it will take a uh, action in a slow pace 
it will not complete its action within minutes. Now what these hormones are also responsible for many of the insects in fact for the frog development for the metamorphosis of frog all these hormones are also very very useful. The endocrine glands are also called as glands of internal secretion. Glands of internal secretion. Since these glands are not outside the body, they are inside the body. So obviously they are going to secrete the hormones inside the body. So that's why another name given to it is glands of internal secretion. And the hormones are called as chemical messengers. Now why they are called as messengers? Because they are targeting the area where the requirement is there. So that is why they are taking the message in the form of chemicals that is the hormone. I will give you one example. If we are eating food and lot amount of sugar is produced in our body and that type when the sugar is produced in our body it triggers a information which is caught hold by the pancreas. Now what are pancreas? Pancreas are the glands which are responsible for, re for releasing insulin that is the name of the hormone and that insulin actually breaks down the sugar content in our blood and therefore when a normal person when he eats food the pancreas are triggered triggered means because when the amount of sugar increases that is an indication for the pancreas that release the hormone every now and then hormone is not released it is released by feedback mechanism that means a mechanism which is giving us a feedback that the sugar level has increased now the pancreas should release the hormone insulin and this is how it works in a normal person. In a normal person, I have eaten the food. A food is converted into glucose. That amount of sugar has increased. When the amount of sugar has increased in your body, it triggers a message to the hormone, to the gland that is the pancreas. And pancreas release the hormone insulin. When the insulin is released, it helps in breaking down the sugar and bringing the sugar level to normal. This is how the chemical messenger works. This is how the feedback mechanism helps in producing or secreting the hormones into the bloodstream. So chemical method that means the chemical control and the nervous control are the two major type of controls which are actually coordinating and controlling all your body system, all your organ system to work in a fun and function in an optimal way. That means to maintain the steady state, another word for steady state is homeostasis. So this to maintain a homeostasis, the chemical method and the nervous method is required in our body which is working by the co coordination of brain and the spinal cord. So this was about the control and coordination or the regulators of life which are very important in our body to maintain a steady state or of homeostasis. Hello students, welcome back. We have finished the explanation of the lesson. We have studied the coordination in plants and coordination in animals. Now we have studied lot of in detail about the brain, which type of brain, which parts of brain does which type of work and how the movements in plants take place. I have drawn a concept map which is the in short the whole lesson how can we explain in this manner let's start now first we discussed what is control and what is coordination in plants and animals or in human beings so what is control control is the regulation of the activities and coordination is the execution of this so control and coordination is necessary for maintaining a steady state that means maintaining homeostasis. Now I'll try to explain you with the flow chart which is also called as concept map. Control and coordination is found in plants as well as in animals. In plants, the plants do not show the movement which we show. The human beings can move from one place to another, animals can move from one place to another, but plants do not move from one place to another. 
then what type of movement they show? They show two types of movements. The growth dependent movement and the growth independent movement. In the growth dependent movement, if you remember, I gave you the example that how the pollen grain develops a tube to the ovule. This was growth dependent because the growth has to take place from the seed. But growth independent movements where it is not related to growth. For example, when we touch the touch me not or the mimosa plant. When I touch the mimosa plant, what happens? It just twists away or it goes away or it folds inside. That is growth independent type of movement seen in plants. What about animals? Now animals are movable. That means they move from one place to another place including human beings. This movement, how is it controlled? The control is done by nerves and chemicals. Now nerves or nervous system or chemical or chemical system. In the nerves, we have studied about three types of nervous system. The CNS that is the central nervous system, PNS that is the peripheral nervous system and ANS that is the autonomous nervous system. Uh, the CNS or the central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord. You can see here brain and spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system consists of the network of nerves which comes from the crane, cranial or the cranial nerves and which comes from the spinal nerves. So spinal nerves and the cranial nerves form the peripheral nervous system. And what about autonomous nervous system? That nervous system which actually is controlling the involuntary actions. So we are going to see how the spinal cord and the brain which is the part of CNS that is the central nervous system how, do it, how does it work. This spinal cord is the cord which is passing through your backside which is protected by the vertebral column. This is controlling all your reflex actions. Now what was reflex actions? The reflex action are the sudden movement or sudden change or sudden activity which we do without thinking. It's not planned. Suddenly it, has, it is done and that type of activity is called as reflex action. Brain. Now brain is comprising of three parts. The forebrain, the midbrain and the hindbrain. That means the forebrain which is in the front part, the midbrain which is in the middle part and hindbrain which is in the last part near the neck. The forebrain is responsible for voluntary actions. The voluntary actions means the actions which are done on our wish. If I want to do, I will do it. That type of actions is called as voluntary action. Midbrain and hindbrain together are actually responsible for involuntary actions. The involuntary actions, the actions which we have not planned or nothing is under our control. Those type of actions are known as involuntary actions. This was about the brain. Then what about the chemical part? That means the movement of the animals is also controlled by chemicals. The chemicals are the hormones which are released by endocrine glands. What are endocrine glands? Endocrine glands are the glands which do not have in any duct and they are also called as ductless glands. These are the glands which are releasing the hormone into the bloodstream directly which are responsible for overall growth of your body. Endocrine glands are also uh, controlled by the brain and this is how the whole uh, movement in animals is taking place. That means the control and coordination in animals is taking place through nerves and through the hormones which are, which are act working in coordination with each other. This was about the regulators of life, the concept map in short. If you know this concept map or the flow chart, you can easily write the answers based on this.